Another visit for me to the paddock to meet up with the, the man of the moment, David Croft. This oh, is yeah. um, an insane environment. I just saw the live <laughs> yeah. action show. I've done a lot of live action shows myself, but that out there, talk us through the bits you can. It's pretty hardcore for 50 minutes, I must admit. We, uh, we start off with every single car except the rallycross cars in the live action arena revving up their engines so we want to get a bit of noise right from the outset so as you can hear i've been shouting a lot today <laughs> we've done five shows one more to go uh, and then we move on to uh, a bit of autograph action a bit of racing on our track we've got terry grant with the first of his two stunts we've got the boys and girls of the btcc well boys really they're boys not girls, really, are they? yeah well no they're the all boys. boys and girls of brisker f1 uh, we've also got the rally cross 50 years of rally cross which is just amazing and if you think it's just like a static demo no, no. Right. first time these cars have all been in the same place together, but they are absolutely ragging it around the track. I love it. Now, before we come to the big finale, no, I'm not that mentioning is, that yet. That is just mind blowing. Yeah. Uh, you arrive in this little red number behind us here. This is your new shoe, isn't it? <laughs> this is my new shoe for the weekend. Uh, Mercedes UK have very happily, as far as I'm concerned, and probably not as far as they're concerned, donated me a car. I, I phoned them up. I said, "Give me something that I can come into the arena in and look the part." So we have a Mercedes GTS, which I have to say, I would gladly drive every single day of the week should I be given one. Please, yeah. subtle hints. Subtle hints. Yeah, now I watched this for the first time, like I say. I just saw the autographs. I've never seen the autographs cars, the oval racing. Yeah, I've never brilliant. seen that before. But they seem to spend a lot of time on three wheels, trying yeah. to cock in one leg up in the air. Yeah, the class eights do, yeah. They're insane, aren't they? What's your favourite, if you can pick one class, one category out there, apart from your little red shoe. Apart from my little red shoe. I, I tend to go to the back of the stands and watch the Brisker F1s from there because yeah. they, they are noisy, they are heavy and they're a bit brutal as well. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I've got a soft spot uh, for the stock cars but in all honesty when the rallycross cars come out I am purring with delight on that one. It's, it's proper ballet on four wheels. I love it. And you see those turbos spinning up all the time. Oh, oh, exactly. It's just a great noise if you can hear that over all that revving yeah. which is just it's great bring here they go again the stock cars are at it again <laughs> they never seem to stop do they um, so you've got quite a lot of shows here you've been doing this for quite a number of years as well yeah my fourth year in the live action arena it's great to come down first year that i've actually been based here for the whole show normally i kind of come on do 20 minutes and then go off to the main hall yeah. and meet a load more people so i'm not meeting as many of the f1 fans uh, for instance as i normally do but i really enjoy it here and it's, it's a great fun and for me it's this is always the Autosport International is always where we kickstart the motorsport yeah, season oh yeah. and we kind of get ready for it. And it's been great to catch up with a few mates from the world of F1, from touring cars as well, uh, chew the cud and, and, and get the get the fever juices going again. Well, we saw um, yesterday actually Colin Turkton announced that he was leaving, leaving the Subaru. Yeah, car. I didn't, you know, didn't that. know that because it's such, no a quick, it's such a quick turnaround. I spoke to him earlier on and I was talking to him about what he's going to be doing. He said, well, we're already working on it. We're trying to sort out a drive for oh, 2017. I think he'll be okay. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. But you're back in F1 again. Uh, uh, doing yep. stuff with the coverage of Sky. Absolutely, we go out in March for the second test. I'll be at that one. Uh, Ted Kravitz will cover the first test, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's actually 70 days from where we're talking now to qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix. 70. Where does the winter break go these days? Yeah, well, I, who knows? I know you're not a betting man, right? <laughs> but who would your who would your money be on? Actually, we don't know the lineups yet. I mean, what's Bottas doing? We know that it's great to see. Um, I think it's great to see personally to see Massa back. Yeah, I think Felipe is Felipe is risking a reputation, oh, yeah. to be honest, and he's putting an awful lot on the line to come back and help Williams should they need him, should Bottas go. I think Bottas will, will go, and I think we yeah. will see Felipe Massa back again. Yeah. Um, the fight at the front, I think, will be Mercedes and Red Bull. I hope Ferrari get their act together. Very disappointing season for them last year, and I'd like to see Ferrari join it and make it a three-team battle. I'm not quite so confident about that, but I do think Hamilton... Uh, Verstappen, Ricardo. Yeah. One of those three will win the world title next year. It's one of those three. It's incredible young talent coming into Formula One. Verstappen, we look at that. I mean, didn't think he had a driving license when he started racing in F1, <laughs> which is just incredible. But the, the sports, we had a bit of a low with the change of the engines a few years ago. But the, I think the public come back around to the idea. They still don't like the noise, but they they come in back to the idea. Yeah, it was a bit of a low from the from the perspective that the noise just wasn't yeah. there, to be honest. But I think what the sport did was quite incredible with, with, with the technology development. These cars, you know, in a straight line, have been going faster than we saw in the V8 era. Now we're going to see the cars go faster through the corners as well. Yeah. Much more aerodynamic freedom for the teams, which will be superb. And yeah. I, I'm looking forward to seeing, certainly at Barcelona, how the drivers cope with that. Mm -hmm. Because Barcelona is a, is, is a track that rewards aero efficiency. And, and if you can get it right there, you'll get it right everywhere. But 
I don't know, does it help the overtaking? That's that's my big fear. Yeah. You well. know, if you're creating more turbulent wake, are you helping overtaking or are you stopping overtaking? And slower straight line speed because of the more drag, yeah, but true. faster cornering speed. So we're going to see but five seconds. But laps. they'll develop the engine, so you won't notice that. The engines will be more powerful, the ERs will be more powerful. Yeah. Yes, you'll have more drag, but you'll have more powerful engines than we certainly had at the start of the hybrid era. That's the way with Formula One. Yeah. The evolution, the revolution is absolutely dramatic. Now, we could chew the cut about F1, we could chew the, the cut about motorsport forever. Autosport, as we know, is the pinnacle. It's the start, really, of the, yeah. of the motorsport season. It has every form of motorsport in there. Live action arena, we won't say what the finale is, but can you give us any, any clue? We've literally turned the finale on its head. Beautiful. That's all you need to know. If you're coming down, enjoy. If you haven't come down and you've missed out, Chances are we'll be back again next year, yeah. and chances are you've got no excuse to miss out then. So come and see us. We're a friendly bunch. Come and say hello. And it'll probably be bigger and better again. I next certainly year. hope so. Crofty, real pleasure. Thank you very much. You too, my friend. Take care.